Welcome back to The Big Show. It's Alex Belfield back here in Quebec at one of the major tourist attractions, which is the Plains of Abraham. And it's basically the Central Park of New York or the High Park of London. It's a beautiful thing looking down over the St. Lawrence River. And joining me, of course, on the Plains of Abraham is Abraham Martin. How are you? Uh, très bien. Uh, very good. Uh, I speak English. Uh, no accent at all. So, yes, I am Abraham, a friend of Champlain. Uh, I came here in 1617. I was the king's pilot. Then I became a farmer in 1635. And the park, lovely. It's not a pasture for cows anymore. Uh, the park is like you said, it's like Hyde Park in London. 108 hectares of beautiful, I uh, uh, could say, uh, grass gardens. Uh, not very far from here, we have uh, the John of Arc Garden, the place for wedding pictures. 150 species of flowers, the place for wedding pictures. It's a lovely park for lovers. It could be nice to walk ar around the park. 808 hectares, you walk around, you take the, uh, the boardwalk, then you go with your lover to the Hotel Frontenac, and you could maybe rent uh, the, uh, the Hotel Frontenac, the honeymoon suite. Uh, I think it's $1,200 per night. Uh, be romantic. Love is important. Yeah, and love comes at a price, though, doesn't it? Sorry? Love comes at a price at $1,200. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a deal for you, <laughs> of course. And I don't know how many, how much in pounds, but uh, yeah, the park is important for uh, uh, sports, cultural events, uh, the historical part of the uh, of the park. Later on, I'm going to tell you about this famous battle between the Bit British and the French. But this park is a place for big events like, uh, um, I don't know if you heard of it, but uh, la uh, this year, was the four, this is the 400th anniversary of the park. And guess who came here for a show and sang? A British. Uh, he's supposed to be famous, but uh, he was singing in a group uh, called the Beatles, uh, Paul uh, McCartney. Who? Paul McCartney, heard of him? No, I don't think anybody turned up to that, did they? And then me, he's British, so I, I don't really trust the British, but he, he was amazing. <laughs> 200,000 people came here to listen to him. Then, not very far from here, Céline Dion. Céline Dion. She is great, lovely. Another 200,000 people. Also here during winter, amazing. How much of snow did we get last winter, uh, Mr. from England? Guess, guess something? Uh, I don't know. Six feet. <laughs> Six feet. I say meters. I'm French. From France. Come on. <laughs> You're a little confused. Very nice, but confused. British are always confused. 5.2 meters of snow last winter in Quebec City. Ooh. So this is lovely for cross-country skiing. We have 15 kilometers of runs and trails for cross-country skiing. Snowshoes is very popular. And the Quebec Winter Carnival. The Quebec herd of Bonhomme. Bonham, the yes, mascot, yes. The mascot, the snowman. Uh, Bonham for Bonham, we built a, a big ice uh, a castle. And on the plains here, it's a big place for for uh, sports, for kids, the family place, sliding, a big international sculpting competition on ice, on snow, a lot of fun, parades, two parades. Uh, so a big cultural events on the plains. Uh, yes. You're a man like myself, a man of few words, aren't you? Uh, a few words, you say? <laughs> I'm French. <laughs> <laughs> Are you really? I thought you'd got a Birmingham accent or something. Oh, Birmingham. I did visit Birmingham 15 years ago, but uh, the purpose of this interview is not to talk about the Birmingham, but you British are very bizarre. Uh, I thought I was bilingual. I did not understand anything of the Brumese accent in Birmingham. Very nice people, but uh, impossible to understand. Could you uh, speak properly? Uh, what you, what you made the problem is with people from Birmingham, what don't you understand uh, about it? That's one good thing about England, <laughs> pubs and groups. Uh, anyway, yeah, we, we like... Um, Alcohol very, was very important for the park to hear. Uh, uh, after the battle, well, New France became a British colony. Then later on, the British were afraid of the American invasion. So here, many, many uh, British uh, uh, soldiers, and they were missing their wives, so they were drinking a lot. And, uh, um, and it was also a city for prostitution. 
It's not the uh, good side of the park, but uh, there were in Quebec City at that time, middle of the 19th century, 500 prostitutes in Quebec and pubs also. Did the two go together then? <laughs> of course. <laughs> but <laughs> I have to take care because maybe you're going to tell uh, to, to <laughs> I have a reputation. I'm a friend, a friend of Champlain and uh, I'm an ambassador for uh, for here. But we have a new, uh, we have an activity on the park. We, we call it the convict's last drink. We tell the people uh, about, uh, it's uh, the owner of the tavern and his wife, uh, they, they receive us and we try three different British beer. It could be good, the British beer. Uh, um, we have the stout, a better and the lager. Okay? And we tell... The lager. Lager? Is it like uh, you, you, you're expert of beers? <laughs> lager, do you mean? A lager! <laughs> Almost like the Burumi accent. Uh, and it's uh, uh, so we tell you, uh, historical people, and, and we tell you about um, tortures, punishment, and uh, um, uh, the, the regular life of every day. For example, uh, like you. Uh, I wash, uh, I guess, uh, like you, twice or three times a year. And some people here, bizarre, they wash every day. Every day. Some people, they did buy some big tub bath. I don't know. They wash with water. If you wash your body with water, it's going to open your pores. Then you're going to be sick. Everybody knows that. And Louis XIV, Louis XIV, the, my king, the king of France, did wash for his whole life less than five times. Hmm. Right. And what did he wash with then? If we don't use water, what do we use? Uh, just a regular, qu'est-ce que c'est torchon, piece of cloth. Yeah, uh, dry, 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 dry uh, washing. What about my complexion, though? I, I need to keep my beautiful skin. You, but it, it's good if you don't wash with water. It's going to keep uh, uh, <laughs> some oil on the body. <laughs> and if you're a king, it's even worse. You don't wash and you have a wig, white powder, means you're rich. I guess you're not very rich. No. And, and, and perfume on the top. <laughs> so you don't, don't wash only th- three or four times a year. That, that's enough. So our new the activity is nice. You drink beer and we tell you about tortures, punishment. You heard of the cat of nine tails? Yes. Yeah. Let's pretend you're British. You look British. I mean, you are British. <laughs> you're working at the Martello Tower, <laughs> waiting for the American invasion. Uh, uh, you get drunk on your duty in 1812. How many shots of the cat of nine tails are you going to receive? Twenty. Twenty. Come on. <laughs> the British army was one of the best in the world. Okay, hundreds. Yes, pretty good. Between 100 and 150 slashes of the cat of nine tails. Okay? We, the British, uh, they, they were pretty strict. Uh, also, the wooden horse. Wooden horse. Uh, that high, maybe uh, uh, one meter uh, high, uh, with 20 kilos on your shoulders. Uh, you tie your arms and your um, feet. And uh, that wide, I could say two or three centimeters wide you have to climb that wooden horse and it's going to um qu'est-ce que c'est coccyx coccyx oh you coccyx yeah coccyx oh, yes yeah, so i've got problems with my coccyx standing here listening to you <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're very funny for the british uh, not, not as funny as you though love i gotta tell you <laughs> so you're going to de- désagrégé what's désagrégé your coccyx yes your coccyx at the bottom of your back yeah yeah yes. It's, uh, Pain it's in your coccyx. Be, uh, yeah, yeah, you, you're right. Your English is excellent. Yes, I'm, I'm half French, I think, at this point. Oh, you have French? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, we have also uh, uh, coming soon, uh, next year. Would you like me to tell you about the 250th 50th anniversary of the Battle of 1759? No, thank you. No, thank you. I'm going to tell you anyway. <laughs> uh, this is my park. I'm going to tell you the truth. My you have truth. got a rather large gun here, and we're not joking. <laughs> we're never joking. What is this, by the way, and how did you get it through custom? <laughs> this is a, a rifle for a settler. Uh, not, very, uh, not very good and not very precise, but uh, a good, good soldiers could shoot three times a minute a good one Uh, probably a French one I don't know about the British (laughs) army no I know you British were professional I know let me resume the battle okay go ahead go ahead okay right here at the exact place of the battle September 13 1759 10 o'clock in the morning Uh, just first I would like to tell you that Quebec was very hard to take because of the cliffs 
4,500 British, 4,500 French. Uh, uh, the, uh, the British were professional, good rifles. Two of course, bullets, of course. Two, 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 don't interrupt, I said. <laughs> two bullets for each rifle. <laughs> French, not very far from here, but half of the French were farmers. Like me, settler, Canadian militia man, very nice. But they were not used to fight in a formal battle. The European way to fight. 10 o'clock in the morning, French, totally mixed up, unorganized, they shoot first. Once, twice, no reaction for the British. Waiting, waiting, two lines, one kilometer wide between here and St. Foy Street. When the French and the British were about 20 meters of distance, one from each other, then the first line of the British fire, the first line only. 1,000 of them. Fire! French, <laughs> totally mixed up, unorganized in French. Uh, uh, you can do this less quietly because uh, actually you're scaring the squirrels. <laughs> yes, you love the squirrels. <laughs> this is lovely. You European are very bizarre about animals here. Yes. We have big uh, groundhogs, marmots. Uh, we, you are Europeans, you always think it's a beaver. Come on. Alors là, there is a beaver, there is a beaver. No beaver, no flat tail. Oh, no, forget it. There's a squirrel there, look, it's like a rat with a feather boa. No, but how come the squirrels are so important for French and English? Go ahead, anyway, sorry, your yeah. story. French, totally mixed up, unorganized, the French ran inside the walls, right away. Do we win this battle? That's all I want to know. Yeah. <laughs> Could you believe it? That battle changed the whole history of North America, and that battle was probably 15 or 20 minutes. Yes. And the British, you British won that battle. And, ah. But, pretty unusual, <laughs> both generals died. Well, never mind, as long as we won. More calm, I was shot once on his back, probably running away like the rest. <laughs> oh, this is my personal opinion. <laughs> and, and Wolf was shot, uh, in a history book we say twice, we have to be politically correct, not me. Three times. The third bullet was terrible. First one, risk. Second one, heart. Third one, under the belt. Oh dear. <laughs> oh boy. That hurts. <laughs> yes. Uh, and no descendants for Wolf. And he died a few minutes after right behind. You know where he got shot? You serve that for dinner, don't you, in France? For dinner. <laughs> <laughs> you always interrupt me with sorry, jokes. Sorry, sorry. It's important. You took Quebec. I'm not taking this very seriously, and, am I? And, and a few years after, in 1763, New France became a British colony with the Treaty of Paris. And the battle took place exactly here and like you can see a commemorative plaque uh, wolf was shot right here here three times <laughs> like I said and one in a very nasty place <laughs> you're right you're I'm right. wondering why you're so bitter it is because you lost that battle isn't it you French <laughs> of course I'm angry the whole <laughs> continent was French from here to Louisiana then uh, you you t you took you took Quebec. You won that battle, and your friends became a British colony. It's only right. Uh, yes, and. Uh I guess uh, we have some problems for the French. Uh, Louis the Fifteenth, uh, the King of France, no re reinforcement the last three or four years, and in in the whole, uh, uh, including from here through, through Louisiana, one hundred thousand French and one million English-speaking people. So uh, there, I guess there were no chance for French to win that battle. Uh, we lost that battle, but we still speak French. We still speak French. Uh -oh. You can't have everything. Uh, thank you very much for talking. <laughs> Talking to us, we're at the Plains of Abraham here in Quebec, one of the most glorious places to relax. It is like Hyde Park because you're completely away from the city. We're only about a five minute drive uh, from the mayhem. And uh, did nobody tell you that this was radio? You really didn't need to wear the wig and the hat and bring your gun out. Nobody would have known. Do you think so? You just like dressing up, don't you? Uh, um, I'm, I'm, I'm Abraham. I don't know what. <laughs> you, you, uh, I guess you, I'm very sexy. Uh, like, uh, probably. You're well, probably jealous. Next time, uh, try it. Uh, I'm not sure about uh, that. You do, would you like me to tell you about the 250th anniversary of the No, I, well, I'm just looking at the time. We've been here three hours. It's only a three hour program. Okay, but. Uh, thank you. Just one thing. Yes. Next year, in August, uh, Ju uh, it's 1st and 2nd August, it's going to be here. The biggest reenactment forever in Canada. Between two and three thousand reenactors are going to come here and fight to remember that anniversary with the kids. Uh, well, I'd like to come along and I could shoot you in that inappropriate place. <laughs> oh. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's teasing me. Uh, who, who gets the rifle here? Would you like me to show you how it is working? Uh, okay. Congratulations. The interview is finished. Okay. <laughs> Go away and say hello to the broomies for me. Thank you. We'll do all right of you. Uh, thank you very much. We're at the Plains of Abraham and uh, Abraham Martin. You say it far better than me. What's your proper name? Uh, Benoit Gilbert. Customer uh, service representative for the park. But I like dressing. I could be more calm. I could be... For the French, uh, I, could, I could dress as wolf. Yes. Wolf is nice. It's, it's nice to be the enemy. Well, you won't know what this means, but you're like the Lily Savage of Canada. Uh, sorry? It doesn't matter, but my listeners will know what that means. Thank you very much. You're a star. You've got a massive personality and a great story to tell. I only wish we'd got 17 hours to listen to you droning mm-hmm. on, but unfortunately, uh, we've got to go. But thank you so much for talking. You've been fascinating. And uh, do come along here to the Plains of Abraham and meet Abraham Martin. How do you say it? Abraham Martin. Abraham Martin. Oui, a friend of Champlain. Yeah, you, see, you sound more butch than I when you do it again. Abraham Martin, dit l'Écossais, a friend of Samuel de Champlain. I didn't understand a word of that, but I thank you for it. You're British, of course. Learn, learn, learn some French, a language for lovers, uh, good <laughs> advice. Uh, and next time you bring your wife, okay, uh. on the planes and we, uh, we go around. Merci beaucoup.